Okay, have your piece of paper handy. As usual, take notes on the video. What we're going to get into today is levels of organization, but we're going to take it to a higher level, right? Uh, last time we did uh, levels of organization from cells, tissues, organs, organ system, organism, right? And so this is uh, something that's very important just in biology. When you're talking about what is life, how does it work? All living things are made of cells and they're all complex organizations with levels of the organizations from cells to organism. Now I kind of, so write this down, levels of organization. Um, maybe we can make it levels of organization uh, for ecosystems or something, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, things are made of atoms. Yeah, living things are made of atoms, but atoms by themselves are not alive. This pen is made of atoms, but it's not alive. Maybe I should find something that's not the same green screen color. This ruler is made of atoms, but it's not alive, okay? It's the organization uh, that turns it into life, and it's a very sophisticated organization at that. So you can have atoms, like of hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, things like that, if you remember the periodic table. Um, and those can become molecules, like H2O has a whole different set of properties than the hydrogen and oxygen that makes it up, okay? Uh, hydrogen's an explosive gas. Oxygen we breathe. H2O is water, right? It's different than the oxygen we breathe, even though it's made of oxygen. Okay, so there's atoms, there's molecules. Now, organelles are structures inside cells. I kind of skipped that last time to speed it up. But then you get to the basic unit of life, which is the cell. And then you got cells and tissues, organs, organ system, organism. Cells and tissues, organ, organ system, organism. Cells and tissues, organ, organ system, organism. Cells and tissues, organ, organ system, organism. Oh, can you hear that? There's lightning and thunder going on outside while I'm recording this. I love the sound of thunder. That's pretty rare in the Northwest, too. Oh, my dog gets scared of it, though. Okay, well, anyway, I'm going to keep on going with this. That song, they sang it. You guys are going to have to sing song in this lesson. Get used to the idea. Yes, you got to do it. Okay, so anyway, um, here's the thing. It, it, you think people talk about life like, what are we made out of? We're made of atoms. As if it, the scale only goes down to the smaller, smaller, smaller of what we're actually made of. But it turns out, if you look at the big picture, we are not only made of smaller parts, we are part of something bigger than ourselves, too. So that's what this second levels of organization lesson is about, is how the levels that are bigger than us. OK, OK, so write this down. You are not only made of parts, you're part of something larger. I don't know if you can hear that sound. It's a thunderstorm. There's rain coming down. OK, so write this down. You're not only made of parts, you're part of something larger. Now, I'll just give you a little view of it here. we got the organism level, which is the individual living being. Population, which is the that organisms of that particular species. For us to be the population of human beings, you could talk about the population of elm trees. Then the community, the biological community, would be different types of living organisms interacting, which is very important because we have to eat something. We're not eating other humans. That would be gross. So we rely on other living organisms for our survival. And then you get the ecosystem when you're talking about not just the living organisms, but the living and the non-living, the biotic and the abiotic, and then the biosphere, which is the, the entire planet, uh, the way it's all interconnected. Okay, so what we're going to do now is get those levels of organization from the smallest to largest, but these are levels that are getting bigger than us. And it starts where last week's left off with the organism. An organism is an individual living thing. Write this down. Now, I'm not going to go uh, hold on to each of these really a long time. Uh, write, if I go too fast, pause the video and write it down. An individual living thing. For example, a wolf is an organism. You are an organism. Um, my pet dog who's scared of thunder is an organism. An elm tree, a blade of grass, an ant. An amoeba, all organisms, the individual, okay? And then you get organisms at a bigger level. We're all part of something bigger. We are part of the human family. We're part of the human species, right? And the wolves are part of the 
uh, wolf species. So members of a single species. Now, there might be ways of looking at it in terms of family groups or social groups or things like that in, in its intermediate. But what we're talking about in biology is population, is the is all the members of that species in a given area. Okay, so you might talk about the population of wolves in Yellowstone. Are they m managing to recover after they've been reintroduced? That would be something. So we have organism and population, right? Okay, the next uh, level is Community, biological community, means various species interacting. For example, the wolves in the Yellowstone, they interact with a whole lot of different species. Elk, they hunt them. Beaver, they hunt them. Uh, things like that. There's also, they hunt also voles and mice and little rodents is kind of a mainstay of, of a wolf diet. But they also have competitors like coyotes, things of that sort. Okay, so various species interacting. And you also might consider the community to involve the plant species. Uh, for example, uh, wolves don't eat plants, but they eat organisms that do eat plants. So that would also include like the grass that the elk eat, things of that sort. Okay, then you can get not just the living parts interacting, but the living and non-living, the biotic and abiotic parts of it are the ecosystem. You've heard the term ecosystem. So you have living and non-living things interacting. And they interact in a complex web of interactions. And um, in a balance point, if one thing changes in that uh, interaction system, well, other things will have to adjust uh, in accordance. So ecosystems uh, involve, you know, interaction of different living things. Okay? Again, if I go too fast, pause the tape. Then you get to the layer that's the highest we're going to get to is the biosphere. Now, I'm not saying that the planet Earth itself is alive, but the living things in different parts of the Earth interact with each other in a much larger system. For example, we need oxygen to survive. That's part of the abiotic uh, part of our, our uh, uh, habitat in our ecosystem. Well, the oxygen we breathe is mostly made by diatoms in the oceans, right? We are dependent on them. And there's a whole bunch of different ways that science is discovering how different living systems interact with each other globally on the planet Earth, okay? And so um, plants making oxygen and is one of the uh, most obvious ways, but there's others ways, uh, other ways as, as well.